Okay, so I just played through the entirety of Black Mesa Blue Shift Chapter 4 and oh man, do I have a few things to say. So why not cut the intro this time and get straight into it? Lambda Federation. This video is going to be a little shorter than usual. I had a lot of work stuff I had to do this week, so I could barely scrape together the time to make this. Nevertheless, I did luckily have time to play through Chapter 4 of Black Mesa Blue Shift, and I'm really glad that I was able to, because it was quite the experience. In case you're not sure what I'm talking about here, let me reintroduce the mod to you. Black Mesa Blue Shift is a mod for Black Mesa developed by a team called HECU Collective. It's a remake of the original Half-Life Blue Shift expansion that came out all the way back in 2001. Some of you watching weren't even born then. This remake aims to not just recreate, but also improve upon its original by increasing the length of some areas and improving the gameplay. But is increasing the length always a good idea? I'll get back to that in a bit. The last release, Chapter 3, or Duty Calls, was released all the way back in December last year and showed amazing promise. I played through this chapter on the channel, so if you want to see my live reaction to it, then click that I in the corner right now. Oh, and I also interviewed some of the elite developers of the mod in a separate video. You might want to check that out as well. Alright, those were my plugs. Now a little over a year later, and after lots of teasers and media from the developers, we finally got Chapter 4, Captive Freight, to play with. Was it worth the wait? Have they lived up to the hype? Well, spoiler alert, I think they have. Chapter 4 is absolutely massive. It took me about two and a half hours to get through it all, and that's me being an experienced Half-Life slash Black Mesa slash Blue Shift player, so I knew somewhat what to expect here and there. If you're a little less experienced, this could easily take you up to three hours to beat. There's that much content here. Add that on top of the already existing chapters and you already have quite the substantial game here. It's not complete yet, but once it is, this will definitely keep you busy for a bit. It's definitely going to be longer than the original Blue Shift, that's for sure. Let's get straight into the mapping work here, because this is some of the best Source Engine mapping that I've ever seen, hands down. These people have put their hearts and souls into these environments. No corner left undetailed. That together with the amazing new lighting and volumetric tricks the Black Mesa engine brings, you can hardly tell it's still Source at some moments. This mod also loves throwing set piece after set piece at you. From this area with the big tube things you have to explode, to the train yards and the old lab at the end. It's all so good looking. It's almost too detailed maybe sometimes. Nah, what am I saying? Now, these looks do come with a performance penalty though. My poverty PC... <sighs> poverty had some struggles sometimes, especially with the bigger set pieces. This is why I can run the base game, just regular Black Mesa, just fine. That being said though, I was running the game at the highest possible settings and in 4K, so I can't expect to be reaching thousands of frames per second here. Do know though that this mod is going to be more demanding to run than base Black Mesa. Not just the maps look amazing though, the models, weapons and animations look spectacular as always. The weapon animations still gotta be my favorite up to this point. Just so much work went into this man. So apart from looks, how is the rest of the mod? Does the gameplay hold up? Well, mostly it does. It's pretty much what you expect from Half-Life slash Black Mesa. You run, think, shoot and live through various scenarios and hope for the best outcome. You being alive. It did get a little creative with some of its fights though, like when in one of the freight yards you're being carried onto this lift inside of this little ammo shed and you have to fend off soldiers from up high with your newly acquired rocket launcher. That was pretty neat. Or this bit at the very beginning where you get lured in by these soldiers who first seem to be on your side and ask you to check something out real quick for them, only to be stabbed, or shot, in the back by them once you drop your guard. That was legitimately really cool. The gameplay does seem to be dragging on a little too much though sometimes. I felt especially though that some of the areas that they extended just ended up being a little too long maybe. Like there were too many train yards with massive shootouts or too many of these metal doors to shoot through. Even though, don't they have the same amount of train yards as in Blue Shift? They just make the fights last longer. Also, what did they do to the rocket launcher? I blew myself up with this thing way more often than I'd like to admit. It's almost like the hitbox for the projectile was increased in size or something. Had to get used to that and it caused a lot of accidental deaths. Or maybe I'm just not as experienced of an FPS player as I thought. Hmm. 
The writing in Chapter 4 is also completely on point. At some point, you meet the sidekick characters that will accompany you through the rest of the chapter. One of them is Otis, and the other is called Murdoch, and the dialogue between the two is just amazing. My mom's gonna be worried when I don't come home tonight. I thought you moved out. Eh, that apartment... He flaked out on me. Gave the apartment to somebody else. Oh, that's just shocking. Right? Mom tried to change his mind, too. Oh, I bet she did. I mean, she baked a cake for him, got all dolled up, and, uh, you know... Pulled out all the stops, did she? Well, not really. She did leave the shotgun at home. Yeah, that was probably for the best. I don't know whose idea it was to write them this way, but I just want to say thank you. You made me chuckle a fair few times throughout this. It really makes the experience so much better. Okay, here we go. Wait, you have a code for that door? Uh, kinda. <laughs> oh, what the? Well, don't stand behind it then. Later on, you also meet Ronnie, who the two just treat like this person nobody likes, and it's played so well that I was enjoying all of it. Okay, pal, let's get you out of here. Ah, oh, shit. shit. Ronnie! Oh, I'm a sucker for interesting slash good character writing, so this gets massive points from me. Oh, and there is this lady you find along the way too, and of course, Dr. Rosenberg. All of them have distinct personalities. It's really well done, seriously. That alone is worth playing through this. Like, really, Otis is written like a less scared Carl Weezer from Jimmy Neutron, and I'm all for it. Honestly, there are some more things to talk about, like the fact that they also went back and improved upon all the other already released chapters to bring them up to snuff, and I got a couple more things I could talk about about chapter 4, but in all honesty, you just gotta check this one out for yourself. There are patch notes linked in the description below where you can see what they changed in the previous chapters, and of course you can download this mod for free from the other link that is also in the description below. You can download this either via Steam Workshop or ModDB. I did it through ModDB as I ultimately found that to be the easiest way to install it. Uh, trust me, installing it through Steam Workshop isn't as straightforward as usual, so ModDB might actually be easier here. Also, if you've already played this chapter, then don't forget to tell me what you think of it in the comments below. I do read all of them. After seeing what the old labs look like at the very end of chapter 4, man, I cannot wait to see what else this mod is going to bring to the table. But if the ending of this chapter and, of course, the original blue shift has anything to say about that, it looks like we're going to Zen. Zen.